You step aboard an old subway car. You imagine the way things used to be. Suddenly, you're traveling through time. It's 1950, and you're about to take a ride on New York's famous A train. The fare on the city's newest subway is only a dime. Polka dot dresses are in fashion. And Duke Ellington's song celebrates the ride. Where can you take this imaginary journey? Climb aboard at the New York State Museum in Albany. Here, your imagination can take you on many journeys through time. For free information, write Imagine New York State Museum, Albany, 12230. Grandpa, when can we come back? Warren Beatty is on the trail of a murderer in the Parallax View, 6 p.m. Sunday. The time, 23 minutes before 4 o'clock. And good morning. This is Ed Ladd in the Channel 5 Newsroom with the late night, early morning report. A rightist death squad in El Salvador is accusing Salvadoran President Duarte of high treason for arranging a peace summit with leftist guerrillas on Monday. The secret anti-communist army said in a communique it has marked Duarte as a target of its military actions. And Guatemalan officials say their government supports the recently revised Contadora Group's proposed peace plan for Central America. But the officials say the government will join neighboring countries to discuss objections to the document during talks scheduled for next Friday in Honduras. The Sunday Times of London is reporting that British police ignored intelligence warnings about an impending Irish Republican Army bomb attack. The report follows Friday's bombing at a Brighton, England hotel in which four people were killed. Although Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher escaped injury, police are refusing to comment on the Times report, which said British armed forces had sent a warning to police stations nationwide. There's a glimmer of hope in the talks aimed at ending Britain's seven-month-old mine strike. Both sides talked for a third straight day with National Coal Board Chairman Ian McGregor saying he was encouraged, but that that was the beginning of an understanding of realities. But he added that the government is not prepared to change its position. The talks are to resume on Monday. On the national scene, Walter Mondale campaigned yesterday in his home state of Minnesota, telling voters that the past week will be remembered as the beginning of the Mondale-Ferraro victory team. Mondale criticized the Republicans for using what he called their secret weapon, Great Democrats. He called President Reagan's whistle-stop train trip through Ohio on the same Pullman car that Harry Truman once used, the Great Train Robbery. Mondale's running mate, Geraldine Ferraro, poked fun at Reagan's train trip while campaigning in Ames, Iowa. She reminded farmers in the audience that Truman once said, and we quote, any farmer that votes Republican should have his head examined. President Reagan in his paid-for radio address told listeners that the Republicans' vision of strong economic growth is not a pipe dream. It's a living accomplishment. And he said Mondale's is a gloomy vision of weakness. The informal deadline to reach a new contract covering 114,000 United Auto Workers members at Ford expired a day and a half ago. United Auto Workers President Owen Bieber met with Ford Chairman Philip Caldwell in Dearborn, Michigan last night, but there is still no agreement. Meanwhile, at General Motors, the union's tentative agreement with GM appears to be passing by a 6-4 to four margin in local voting. South Pacific Island Airways has been grounded. The Federal Aviation Administration said one reason is the recent incident in which a passenger jet strayed near Soviet airspace. But it says the airline was under investigation before then. The Honolulu-based airline had 10 days to appeal the order. And Miami weather forecasters say Hurricane Josephine's 85-mile-an-hour winds pose little threat to residents along the North Carolina coast. They say Josephine is expected to drift northward into the open Atlantic. It will continue to weaken, but residents should keep watch in case it suddenly changes direction. Geraldine Ferraro said President Reagan's joke about bombing the Soviet Union jeopardized American safety. The Democratic vice presidential nominee noted 
The Pentagon has confirmed the Soviet Union went into partial military alert after Reagan's remarks. Some striking Disneyland workers left the picket lines yesterday to go inside the California park after paying their way in. The strikers handed out leaflets urging patrons to boycott the park. Disney officials say handing out leaflets violates park policy and escorted the strikers out. Officials say a vintage World War II plane apparently hit shallow water and flipped over during a simulated water landing Saturday on the South Texas coast. The Coast Guard said six of the ten people aboard were killed. The four survivors were picked up by fishing vessels. One is in critical condition. And Maryland authorities are trying to determine what caused a fire in a Baltimore County nursing home last night. At least 11 people were injured. Officials say the blaze was confined to one room at the Riverview Nursing Center, but smoke spread throughout one wing of the 300-bed facility. Well, if you watched TV in the early 60s or listened to the radio, you no doubt heard about Route 66. John Steinbeck even wrote about it in The Grapes of Wrath. But Route 66 is no longer. The last section of the highway that once ran from Chicago to Santa Monica, California, was closed down yesterday in Arizona. On the local scene, more than 150 Hasidic Jews shouting, Shame on you, Shimon Perez, broke through police barriers last night surrounding the Manhattan Auditorium where the Israeli Prime Minister was speaking to protest the crime of bulldozing an ancient graveyard in Israel. The bearded, soberly attired men had been ferried to Hunter College in Midtown Manhattan in a motorcade organizers said included 200 cars. Rabbi Isaac Glick of the Central Rabbinical Congress said the fundamentalist Jews had assembled to protest the desecration of an ancient Jewish cemetery in Tiberias by builders constructing a new hotel wing. For 15 minutes, the convoy of automobiles and vans circled peaceably around the college building, but shortly before 10 p.m., the protesters rushed from their cars, which they left sitting on Park Avenue past police sawhorses on 69th Street and headed for the college's main entrance. Now turning to sports, the Tigers can win their first World Series title in 16 years today with a win over the Padres in Detroit. Dan Petrie will start for the Tigers in Game 5, while the Padres counter with Mark Thurmond. Yesterday, Detroit grabbed a commanding three games to one lead in the best of seven series with a 4-2 triumph over San Diego. Shortstop Alan Trammell was the offensive story with a pair of two-run homers. The round trippers came in the first and third innings off per Padre starter Eric Shaw with teammate Lou Whitaker on base. Trammell finished the game with three hits and raised his series average to 563. The two homers by Trammell increased the number of homers hit off Shaw in postseason play this season to seven. The Tigers were also able to cruise to victory on Jack Morris's five-hit pitching performance. With yesterday's win, the right-hander topped the Padres for the second time in the Fall Classic. Morris surrendered a solo shot to Terry Kennedy and a double to Kurt Bavacqua in the second inning and gave up just three other hits all the rest of the way. Now we turn to the weather for the Channel 5 area. Weatherman says cloudy and windy through the night, temperature in the mid-50s. And for Sunday, mostly cloudy and windy, temperature in the mid-60s. For Sunday night, continued cloudiness and windy, temperature in the 50s. And for Monday, weatherman says sunny with winds diminishing, temperature in the mid-60s. Right now it's 55 degrees, humidity is 69%, barometer 29.91 inches and steady. From the Channel 5 Newsroom, this has been the Late Night Early Morning Report. When the world should all be sleeping And the melody comes creeping It's no cabaret At the milkman's matinee Ah, my dear, the night is young and the music out of this world. This is Marty Wilson inviting you to tune in to America's original all-night music show, the Milkman's Matinee, only on... 11 Exciting Western action with Burt Lancaster in The Unforgiven, 2.30 p.m. Sunday.
me tell you about Ed, a friend of mine from college and a life of the party ex-Marine who enjoyed doing what he did, which was to teach English literature to students at a Catholic high school in Brooklyn. One afternoon, he sat at his desk at home working on the questions for an exam he was to give the next morning. At the same time, he was babysitting for his two preschool youngsters while his wife was out shopping. Like all kids, Ed's youngsters were especially adept at badgering their father about the wisdom of taking them outside to play. Ed gently stressed to them that he had a lot of work to do, and he tried to explain in simple, uncomplicated terms why Moby Dick, the subject of the next morning's exam, took precedence over everything else right at that moment. But as you might suspect, he saw his words fall on deaf ears. Now, I don't know if the youngsters had ever heard the words to the popular song of a while back. I'm sure you remember it. You have to stop and smell the roses. Ed's two little ones acted as though they knew the song because they urged their dad to take them to the park. They wanted to swing and slide, climb trees, run on the grass, and look at the flowers. He gave in, finally, shrugging his shoulders in mock despair. And that little incident later became the subject of a magazine article. Ed wrote it for Reader's Digest, and it told about that afternoon with his kids in a Brooklyn park. He knew that he really could find time for the kids, and in a lot of ways, what he was really trying to convey in his story was not unlike what the song's lyrics were saying. You have to count your blessings every day. The greatest things are free and right before your eyes, and you have to spend some time with your family, even if you think other things are important. In a phrase, you have to stop and smell the roses. Ed's article had a prophetic title. The headline over the story said, Now, While There's Time. And it was prophetic because about a year later, Ed suddenly went to heaven. Now the last thing Ed would want here is a lot of sentimentality, and he would cringe at the retelling of his story the way I've just done it. With a Mel Brooks phrase or a Woody Allen type insight, he'd take the starch right out of the story. But how do you forget his story? How do you forget that headline? I know I haven't. Though I often forget, I know that you really have to take the time to count your blessings, to enjoy the things that really matter, and to say thanks. You have to grab the handle on this frantic, busy, busy routine we allow ourselves to get it caught up in every day and stop and smell the roses. And if you're open to it, a child can lead you. This is television station WNEW-TV, Channel 5, New York, owned and operated by Metro Media Incorporated, with transmitter atop the World Trade Center and executive offices and studios located at 205 East 67th Street in New York City. WNEW-TV operates on an assigned frequency of 76 to 82 megahertz as authorized by the Federal Communications Commission. Some programs and portions of programs presented by this station have been recorded. WNEW-TV's entire broadcast schedule is a copyrighted original compilation work. No recording, retransmission, or other use may be made of WNEW-TV's programming without the express prior written consent of Metro Media Incorporated. Good night.